guys, uh, welcome to Unbiased Rugby. Uh, today I'm going to continue with talking about uh, the Springboks. So I think uh, for the next couple of weeks we'll talk about uh, obviously the Springbok team selection. I think the team's only going to be s announced on the fairly fairly late in the month. I know England have already uh, released their uh, their team, and uh, looks looks very very impressive who they're sending down uh, so I'd like to talk about some of the players players that you guys think might be uh, of, of of interest in, in their side uh, and also have a bit of an injury watch for for the Springboks uh, I think uh, Lurt injured his pectoral muscle on on the weekend uh, then the, we're not hundred percent sure if it's if it's a, a serious injury but it, uh, from all accounts that what I've heard that it is fairly serious, uh, which is a huge big blow because currently on a Super Rugby form he's probably the the lock that's on 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 form the most, uh, the best, uh, and he does he does he has incredible ball skills and he fills that enforcer kind of role. It's great in the line out. So I think he was our first choice lock, and now. Now, obviously, if he's injured, who, who, who do we bring in the mix? Uh, I know at the moment in my team that I had selected uh, uh, Peter Steff with uh, Franco Mostert. Uh, I, I, I don't think I'd have Fra uh, Franco Mostert uh, playing with Peter Steff to start. Uh, I, 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 I think they both have different skills to, to Lurt. So we, we need to find a player that uh, obviously... Can fulfill that role, uh, which is which is quite difficult. Uh, I'd say the next next lock that's on form is probably RJ Snayman, uh, maybe Ruan Boerter because he obviously he's got some leadership ability from the Sharks. Uh, I've noticed that maybe I've been picking a lot of my players from the Bulls and the Sharks, so maybe I'm a little bit biased. So I, I hope you guys have some some other players that uh, you could think of that I could probably put in that position, especially from the Pro 14. Uh, but yeah, because uh, obviously, if I look at uh, if I look at the English side, you know, obviously they got uh, Mario Toji, he's a he's a exceptional, exceptional uh, rugby player. Uh, they've got uh, I know Joe Launchbury's coming through. He's also a big, powerful uh, lock. Uh, I'm not sure he has the same kind of ball skills as or the same kind of rugby skills as Mario Toji, but uh, it brings that enforcer kind of role. So. We need someone on our side to to be able to do that. Uh, so yes, well, whoever you think would would fill that pos that that position. But I think uh, from if we look start looking at Super Rugby, if we take injuries into account, and so maybe every week we can look at the injuries and see uh, who who we could fill in that position. I think we've got enough depth at lock to be able to fill uh, fill that position quite easily. But it's just trying to find the right kind of lock that's going to fit in. Uh, Personally, I'd go with an RJ Snayman. I think he's also got exceptional ball skills. Uh, he's breaking the line quite easily, uh, and he's fairly similar to 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 Lurt de uh, Well, let's hope maybe Lurt de is not injured, but uh, from all accounts, it does look like he's injured. Then I see in the news that uh, they've essentially almost well they still have the 30 cap rule but they've basically scrapped it for Rossi. I feel for uh, Alistair could see her because <laughs> he couldn't select any of the players and now with Rossi they can so uh, what are your guys thoughts on it uh, I don't like the 30 cap rule I, I think that we, we could think of completely different ways of of trying to keep our players here uh, at the end of the day, you know, if my brother and my sister came to me and said, hey, they've got an opportunity to earn three, four times the amount of money going to go work uh, work in England, I'd never stop them. I'd, I'd wish them the best and I'd say, go for it, guys. Uh, and I, th I think if I try to look at any career and, and how can we look at rugby differently and say, well, no, you must have loyalty. You know, these guys have families, they've got a short career, so it's, it's a tough one. But... Instead of maybe having the 30 cap rule, maybe have a rule based on Super Rugby performances and Pro 14 uh, appearances. So what, what that means is, I, I think it's fairly easy to keep your top 30 players in the country. I think there's enough money to keep the top 30 Springboks in the country with their dual contracts with the Springboks and with their franchises. Uh, so these guys are earning the money here. Uh, it's, it's fairly 
they're maybe not earning as much as they could earn overseas, but they're still earning good money. So it's, uh, so it's easy to keep those ones, but it's try to, trying to keep the competition for those players so they still stay on top form. So by that I mean we need, we need strong super rugby sides. Uh, so maybe instead of having a 30 cap rule for internationals, so you've got to be play 30 caps for the Springboks before you can play overseas, maybe we say 50 or 80 cap for, for, for a franchise. So if you've played 80 caps for your franchise, say uh, the Sharks, then you're more than entitled to go overseas and you're still eligible to play for the Springboks. Or maybe we look at it even, even more differently and we say, okay, let's completely embrace uh, uh, the Northern Hemisphere and say, okay, now we start, we start uh, integrating more into to the, 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 the clubs up there. We integrate more into the competition. I'm not a big fan of that, but uh, you know, I think we need some, some kind of out-of-the-box thinking when it comes to that. I like the idea of having, uh, say, an 80-cap 80, 80 rule for for the super it means you've played four or five years for your uh for your franchise and then you have the opportunity to go overseas and and earn earn some really good money uh and then you're still eligible for the box uh that would keep the competition a lot stronger in south africa uh to keep our players the younger players here a lot a, a little bit longer uh and it gives the guys an opportunity to to make the money and still be eligible to play for the springboks because i'm sure they want to play for the springboks but you know you got, you got they've got to make a choice and the choice sometimes is obviously money. You know, if your skill is rugby, you've got a career. If you're lucky, to the age of 35. If you're Brian Abana, 36. But you know, like I can't remember the guy's name, but 29, and he's had too many concussions, and now he has to retire. You know, and his whole life is based around rugby. Uh, and now what? You know, so it's a tough one. But Joe, yeah, I'd like to hear what your thoughts are on uh, on. On the 30 cap rule and how it's been relaxed uh, I think there still needs to be uh, an emphasis on selecting local players as opposed to international players but we need to have a way of, of trying to trying to keep our local players here but also give them an opportunity to go overseas uh, I, I had an article that I wrote a while ago about having maybe short-term contracts going north but then we've got to look at player welfare I know uh, Rune Ansa von Rensburg played for Sale Sharks uh, for three months and he went and earned some pounds and the same car also also for a few months earned some pounds uh, but you know they they've come back and then they're not the same players maybe they've got a bit of fatigue so we really need to look at some kind of uh, a way of managing it but y'all what are your guys thoughts on it uh, like I said, my idea is the is is having a cap uh, a, a rule based on on your performances for your franchise. But yeah, also uh, you know if you can start start looking at the the, the England side, uh, I've, I've identified a few players that I think are, are game breakers for for uh, for England. Uh, we've got Brad Shields, uh, obviously the captain for the Hurricanes. Okay, he's got into the side under fairly questionable. Uh, uh, things but look he's, he's entitled to play for them he's eligible for it uh, it, it just seems kind of strange that they would have chosen a player that doesn't play for, for an English uh, for the premiership because uh, they've never done that before and now they're making a special special exemption for for Brad Shields but you know it's a player of such caliber you know they're obviously going to make a plan uh, Owen Farrell also exceptional exceptional uh, rugby player and calm under pressure uh, he's a game. He's a game changer, game winner. So uh, we're trying to think who 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 on the Springbok side is going to go up against Owen Farrell. We got Andre Pollard. Oh, is Andre Pollard in the same caliber as, as Owen Farrell? Uh, that's an interesting conversation. Uh, then uh, I know that the the captain uh, Owen Farrells are going to be the captain. I know the captain. Uh, I can't remember his name. Is the hooker? I know he's he's got concussion at the moment. But they, I, I know I've seen Jamie George play, and uh, he's also he's also a great uh, great rugby player. Uh, then Mario Toji, another on another level. And the last thing about Mario Toji, he also is like a like Franco Mostert and Peter Steff. He can play lock and uh, a flank, but uh, from a from a pure rugby rugby skill level, he's he's incredible. Then we've got the two brothers, uh, Billy and Mako Vinopolo. Uh, 
you know, I think Billy Vinopolo has been injured for quite a while, but he's come back and he's, he's, he's really got a real go forward. Uh, and it's those are the players that I can identify straight out of the box. But it'd be interesting to see who you think uh, would we should have a look out for, or who should who we should select on our side that could co combat that. But yeah, it's uh, so yeah. I think uh, I think today is a is a is a bit all over this show. <laughs> Not really that organised, but uh, that's fine. So. I'd like to hear your thoughts on on the injuries. I'd like on on the thirty cap rule and on uh, and the players that we should watch out for England. And then maybe next week or, or in the next show, you know, I can bring out those comments and and, and try try see how I look at it. Uh, maybe Gordon will be here and he'll have his opinion. Uh, he said he'll be with me tomorrow for the Super Rugby predictions, so I'm hoping for that. But listen, guys, thanks for listening and chat to you guys soon. Cheers.